Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 402. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and I'm back from vacation. Um, It's been, what, a week without an episode? I'm sorry about that. I did mention that I went on a vacation. And, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I'll talk about it in the other part with what have I been doing and stuff but we have a lot of news to cover mm, kind of but let's hop right into it so first thing in the news is Lauren Foss reveals how Nightmare Moon was freed so it's been almost what 10 years since the show aired and the question has always been how did Nightmare Moon escape and whatnot? And there's always the what do you call this prediction of her escape. Um, the stars will aid in his escape or something like that. So uh, there's someone on the Twitters, as Lauren. Um, one question has been on my mind since the beginning of um, Mother Pony Friendship's Magic: Who freed Nightmare Moon? And Lauren replied with, uh, watch the episode again. The stars aligned in a perfect pattern that allowed her escape. And who controls the sun and moon and the stars? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, the obvious answer would be Celestia. At the time, all of the celestial bodies were controlled under her. The raising of the sun and moon... The shifting of stars? I don't know how that universe works. But it's logical to say that she was the one that did it. Um, <coughs> I'm just checking out the comment and see anything that sparks out my theory and whatnot. Uh, well, so suffice to say that that is a really good answer or good question and answer and to be honest I'm surprised that they answer that now like it's been what 10 years since the show came out and whatnot and now is the time that they answer it surprisingly surprisingly but with that out of the way let's move on to the next news and next news is Max Group hooks up with Hasbro Hot uh, for, ooh, for fu- four. Yes, for future plushie licensings. Yay. What is up? Sophisto, did you screw up? Oh god. But anywho, um there's a new company, yay, um uh, Max Group. They're gonna make new plush and these are their concept plush. And they look good. Yeah. They they look not bad, they look not bad. Um we we had a lot of Toys from other vendors in uh in the past, and some of them look good, some of them look bad, and this one looks okay. And I f- can't say much. Uh, let's see. You know, this one is not that great. Okay, the primary pa- pra- pra- this primarily pertains to Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, with Yumi taking the helm for the plush side. Okay. Um, so basically, it's just another licensing thing where the Max Group just struck a deal with Hasbro. Hasbro licensing out their brand to Max Group to make more plush. And Yumi, is this why you or... Yeah, why you Yumi is just going to make the plush. In all honesty, it's great because when I was on vacation and even here, I saw a lot of kids with their pony plush holding them and whatnot. And yesterday when I was at my local game store, I was talking to this guy and he said that, uh, his kids um, played home with the ponies and stuff. And honestly, that's great. Like, 
the brand, even though the show has ended, the brand is still strong. So yay, um, more product means more toys for us. But in all honesty, I really like the 4DE plush. This one. Because it's show canon. Like, it's specifically it's specific to the show like you you can't th this is just great the look the look of it is just so perfect like compared to what we have there this one is amazing but i'm guessing the price for uh for for de to make them is i guess it's not worth the licensing and hassle <coughs> but other than that uh, great on them more toys for us and moving on to the next one, which is, well, Kotobukiya Rainbow Dash now available for pre-order. So, I know you guys out there love the Kotobukiya figures. I love them too. I just don't have the funds to buy them. They're about, what, $100 if you pre-order them, they're cheaper and whatnot. And I know one of you buys them on a regular basis. But still... Um, this is awesome. This is awesome. We we can take a look, see at some shots here, and yeah, I would really love this. The details on the hair and the ponies. It's just like yeah, this this is just a good toy, really good. Uh, but oh man, it's available for pre-order. So yay, go go at it. And let's see, uh, Kotobuki has just popped up pre-orders for Rainbow Dash for everyone collecting the series. Uh, she is the fifth in line with Applejack coming up in the last slot and Rarity opening pre-orders back in October. So yay, um, click on the link to go to the Kotobuki store to pre-order. Is it Kotobuki store? Let me double check. Yep, it's Kotobukiya. So, I guess they're available for pre-order. And last on the Kotobukiya train, uh, we get to see a colored image of Applejack. And this is how she might look. <coughs> Pendentalizing final product may vary, so don't hold your breath on this is the final shot or not. But this looks good. This looks really good. Like... All six are announced and available and just waiting to be handed out. And oh my god, this is really good. And also on top of that, there's a mystery figure. Oh, who could it be? It's Sunset Shimmer. It's Sunset Shimmer. This, this figure of Sunset, I will try my darnest to get. Like, in Equestria Girls... Sunset Shimmer is my favorite. So, this one I am going to try and get. <laughs> Just need to find a way. That's going to be annoying. But still, um, I won't be expecting her to what? Uh, let me just read the article. Uh, Kotobukiya, the company behind the insanely popular human nice Malibu pony statue, just announced on their Twitter account that Sunset Shimmer will be joining the lineup. This is big news as it was assumed that only the main six would be getting the uh, detailed sculpt treatment. In all honesty, you, you're doing Equestria goals. You just have, you, you gotta do Sunset. It's the most logical leap in logic. In addition, a fully painted Applejack will be shown off at Kotobukiya's booth at Wonderfest 2000. 20 on February 9 um, we're in what oh today on the Sunday yes uh, see links to it below okay so this is just awesome they're gonna have my bum <laughs> they're gonna have my money yay I can't wait it's gonna be fun and let's hop on to the last news and last news is my Little Pony and Transformer crossover? Yay! This is cool. Wow. Um, 
what can I say? This this is just I wasn't expecting this. You know, honestly, no. Uh, the leaps in logic in my head says like, how could this work? Even though ponies are, um, they they do have their adventures and whatnot, but to combine them with transformers, that's something else. Oh no, uh, there's something else. So we we have a blurb here, so I'm gonna read it. Um, <coughs> uh, let's see. Uh, when Green Chrysalis, sorry, uh, the synopsis is going to be this. Uh, when Green Chrysalis casts a spell looking for more changeling, she accidentally interferes with a malfunctioning space bridge. What this means for our favorite fillies, there are suddenly a bunch of Autobots and Decepticons in Equestria. And as the dust settle, Rarity and Archie find themselves teaming up against a hostile Decepticon force, plus Spike and Grimlock, Pinkie Pie, Gage and Shockwave, Fluttershy, Discord and Soundwave, Rainbow Dash and Windblade, and Optimus Prime and Twilight Sparkle all team up for more adventures. Okay. <coughs> This is interesting. This is really interesting. Um, writer is Ian Fillion, uh, James Asum, uh, Asmus. Uh, illustrators is going to be by Tony Fleece and Jack Lawrence. Then it's going to be 96 pages long. And this is going to be released on November 3rd, 2020. There's more info. This is not going to... Um, November 2020 or November 3rd, 2020 is going to be the... Uh, hardcover or the trade paperback we got more info here um, <coughs> it, it, it rolls out the same thing blah 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 um, uh, let me just oh this is hmm okay uh, because your lady and our friends over at ID Revolution are happy to confirm that there there's no one not there's not one not two but three writers five illustrators working on the title and whatnot uh i've read okay that's on the other one okay so moving on okay let me just read this blurb here where where was that line mm. okay sorry guys uh, bit of okay. Uh, in May, IDW will be go will be going all in on this crossover concept with different issues dropping every week for a four part series. A few of the writers have dropped their personal hype for their work in the project. So, starting in May, every week, every week is it? Uh, Every week, yes, wow. So every week we're going to have an issue come out. And this is a four-part series. And I do hope that it's specific because I don't want to go buy a Transformers book just to read what's going on here. <laughs> so I'm going to read blurbs or writer's quote. And <coughs> here goes. The writing I've got to do individually for My Little Pony and Transformers have already proven to be some of the most fun I've had in my career. So it's pure joy to play them off each other, says Asmus. We're making a wild mashup unlike anything else in your comic collection. You basically owe it to yourself and your future happiness to get a copy wow those are big words those are big words it's been a delightful challenge finding common threads between the ponies and bots it's certainly a fun and unique opportunity says Flynan Flynan I, I, I guess that's how you said I hope fans of both franchises can come together and enjoy this and honestly, I like Transformers, I like Ponies. This seems like a good 
mash up so I'm going to go read it unfortunately there might be some Transformers fans who might not see this as good or as great or they just don't like it so I I'm guessing they have going to miss out and probably this won't be canon to what they have or probably if they probably if it is canon they're just going to refer it to that one strange adventure that they have with equines and stuff yes so uh, My Little Pony and Transformers are two of my f all time favorite universe having written for both uh, having written for them both previously, the idea of bringing the citizens of Equestria and Cybertron together is incredibly exciting, says Mags. And those two worlds are cool. Equestria has its own lore and stories, while Transformers has its own. I'm not fluent in the Transformer lore because I haven't read anything about it. Uh, my knowledge is based on all the cartoons that are available. So, yeah, so those are my thoughts. And I can't wait. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <coughs> Teaming Transformers and My Little Pony has been a dream that has uh, <coughs> has been a dream we've had for a long time says IDW Editor-in-Chief John Barber. We're all really excited to see this mashup of characters by a mashup of creators who are honoring the legacy of both universes and doing it in the most bonkers, fun way imaginable. So, it's official. The team in the team who are doing this are fans of both uh, IPs and they are really putting their all into this but as per usual um, temper your expectation down a bit because with every or with any crossovers you can't make one side too good and the other side too bad Th there has to be a balance where all of the brands have to look good and in this scenario here uh, it's it's been said that okay we have uh what now <coughs> yes folks uh, is it this one uh, it's this one so okay uh, in this scenario here uh, we've been given some of the mashups so we have i'm gonna say queen chrysalis with the decepticons that's obvious and we have what team ups like Rarity and Archie. That's an interesting combination that they're doing. Uh, Spike and Grimlock. That's another interesting one. And which Grimlock are they using? Are they going to use the um, Transformers Cyber or something? The, the new the new three D series that's going on. Because in Dinobot form, he's a big dummy, but in his robot form. He is a genius. So, uh, are they going to do that version of him, or the classic cartoon version where he's just well dumb, or you know what I mean? So, that's going to be interesting one. Pinkie Pie Gage. I'm not familiar with Gage. Huh? Who is Gage in the Transformers series? It shows me what I know, right? Um, let me see. Transformers. Okay, now I just need to type Gage G. Oh, my eyes. A U G E. Gage. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's him? Really? Huh, okay. Um. Wow, um, they're not giving me much, but I'm guessing this is him. So, 
Huh, okay. Gauge and shockwave? So, the <laughs> here's the part where I'm a bit confused on what timeline they're going for here because are there team ups or are they're just going to be facing off each other because um, Pinkie Pie Gauge versus Shockwave or Pinkie Pie Gauge and Shockwave working together. Uh, Fluttershy Discord and Soundwave is going to be an interesting one because nobody messes around with Discord's waifu. Um, Soundwave. Is this Soundwave the good Soundwave or the bad Soundwave? Oh man. See, in some way down the timeline of the Transformers series, Megatron kind of became an Autobot and Soundwave became an Autobot ally S still has his crest like insignia I, I don't remember but I'm so out of it that I don't understand anything much so if you're a Transformers fan mind explaining to me what's going on and if Shockwave a good guy now because this is going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. And Windblade and uh, Rainbow Dash and Windblade. Yeah, it makes sense. And Optimus Prime and Toilet Sparkle. Yay, much of awesomeness. Where's Celestia and Luna? That's the real question here. Because we have aliens from another planet coming down to Equestria. And they should be around to, well, take care of stuff. You know. The more I question about where Celestia and Luna are, the more I'm not going to get a really good answer. And there's the news for this week. So, we have what? Kotobukiya coming up with Rainbow Trait with a Sunset Shimmer figure. Um, IDW is going to be coming up with a Transformers My Little Pony crossover. And Max Group is going to be making more plush for ponies so i have to say all in all this week has been awesome i'm glad i waited a bit oh and also we got the answer for who freed the luna or nightmare moon from the moon so yay so <clears throat> all in all i have to say this is a good week glad i took a break because if not, last week it would just be the Nightmare Moon thing and whatever I could cobble up. Not a really fun episode. And what, we're already 22 minutes in and counting? So that's good. So let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is what have I been doing with my week? So what have I been doing with my week is that, well, I went on vacation. Yes, sorry folks for no episode last week, but kind of had to wanted to go on a vacation um my friend his schedule aligned and we all had to do it or all had to take the break last week because if we do it any later and let, let's just say the stars align so where did i went well um, i went within the country and I went to the north part of Malaysia to Langkawi. Um, is Langkawi part of... Hmm. Sorry folks, my, my geography is not that strong. Give me a second. Yeah, um, Langkawi is part of... Hmm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you know what? I'm bad. But I went to the Langkawi Islands and it was a lot of fun. I flew there from my state, which is the down south, to a small remote island in the upper north. So... <coughs> What did I do there? I did a lot. One of the few things that I did was I went island hopping. Uh, I got to see the eagles being fed 
I got to go kayaking in a river. There's there's a river. There's a lake. Yes, there's a lake. Got to do kayaking for the first time, and it was really interesting, and it was a lot of fun. So yay! Uh, also, what else? Um, I got to go have a lot of food. Like food there is awesome, uh, but mostly I ate at some local restaurants with what rice. Um, Steamed fish, fried fish, um, barbecue fish, and whatnot. Fish is prevalent there. Yes, there's a lot of fish. <laughs> um, also, what else? Uh, if you've been following my Instagram, which is Instagram.com/slash/NormanSanzo, you get to catch me with some stuff on my story. Unfortunately, it's not there anymore. But I believe I took some pictures, so. Yay, go check it out and go also give a follow. It doesn't hurt. Uh, what else did I do? There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, oh, on the last day, I went parasailing and I rode a jet ski. And at night, I sat on the beach looking at the stars while enjoying a nice cool drink of bottled water. So... All in all, it was a really fun experience. It was a really fun time. Also, spent a buttload of money on chocolates. The chocolates there are cheap. Uh, in all honesty, bought some for people back home. So, uh, I just bought myself a bo- what's this? A bottle of chocolates, and it's raisins. Yay! <laughs> Uh, but in all honesty, vacation was fun, but I am glad to be back home. I miss doing this. I, I miss my whole setup. I miss my table. I miss you guys. And yeah, I just can't wait to get back to the groove of doing this again on a weekly basis. Talking about pony news and whatnot. Oh, I mean, I, I miss this. miss this so much. So anywho... Let's wrap this up because we're already 37 minutes in and we... You know what? It's a good time. Good time. So, anyways... If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PointLive.com. Also do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Tatera, reviewing the Pony Comics, episodes, and specials. Sometimes we like to do other things other than ponies. Um, we, we do movies, we do games, we do comics. So, it is a lot of fun. We we do the fun things, yay. So, um, go and give it a subscribe, yay. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts. Exclusive and deleted content And a huge thank you from me And talking about the thank yous I would like to thank Tristan Myself like Amy Lucky Knight Thank you so much guys You are great So anyway I have been Norman Sanzo And I'll guys catch you next week With another fun episode of the MBS show See ya